Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and to a Cards of Vedic deck profile and this is going to be an update to my Night Rose Grand Blue deck post Rumi Labyrinth character booster and with this all of my deck projects are more or less finished until fighter selection in the new booster set comes out so yeah and with that being said let's get started on this so it's been quite some time since I last featured Night Rose on the channel as a deck profile I've done videos showing me playing it on CFA and uh, what can I really say about this deck that hasn't been touched on before like it's a really good deck it doesn't see as much play over here as it did in Japan but that's because of a difference in player culture Japan is much more competitive and willing to bandwagon a good deck than North America whereas we're more well casual and we're more or less willing to play our one to three clans that we've held on to all this time and not to mention the secondary market makes it very difficult to pick up a new deck out of, out of the blue looking particularly at this guy and how he basically doubled from when I initially picked up the cards of this deck like that uh okay you know what we're not going to go into that rant here it's been said let's not do that let's just talk about this deck because um I have to say like within the it's been what a good year and a half since set six came out in the amount of time that's passed since I initially picked up the Night Rose deck and and by extension the Seven Seas deck and so I guess just Grand Blue in general I've come to just really love playing this deck or this clan it's so fun because now that they've properly balanced the power of skills in, a, in relation to their costs this deck gets to finally shine because of its playstyle, and that is Graveyard Toolboxing, and that's some of my favorite kind of deck play, where you have an ever-expanding pool of resources that raises your play ceiling, and the result is, while you have to be very smart in your resource management, the deck rewards you for playing it well, and as a result, Night Rose in particular has more or less got this reputation of being a somewhat difficult deck to play, but rewarding as well. Like, like this, in my opinion, is a Yu-Gi-Oh player's deck, and maybe that's also a reason why as to it doesn't see as much play here, but I'm going to say that the reason why Night Rose isn't dominating here as like it did in Japan is because North America is much more fond of Paladins and Link Joker, and it used to be very, 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 very hard on for Kagura, but that deck's more or less falling off the radar because Control just can't compete right now, but yeah. Um, long story short, even though this deck may not be seeing the same amount of representation of Bushy Robo Championships over here as you would like to, don't think that it's a bad deck. It's a very, very, very good deck, and if you know how to play Grand Blue in this deck well, then go for it, because it's a very, very, very dangerous deck once it gets rolling, and... Uh, it, it, like it it's one it's in my opinion one of the most skill incentive decks in the game like it's right up there with supposedly great nature and despite what people will tell you gear chronicle that deck also requires a good amount of skill to play properly it's not just the ubertar loop over and over again but uh, that's neither here or there so with that being said let's dive right into this i've, I've spent about three minutes talking about things anyway so for the four runner running Grenache, because I'm flipping two damage in the end of the turn, is very nice, and you have ways to put it out into play again, so you can unflip four. Then for the grade threes, we're running four of the original Night Rose, because this is just the better Night Rose. So just a quick recap, when you stride, count us one, call something to drop something that gets a 2k buff, and then once per turn, generation break two, when something dies on your side of the field, you can mill three to bring that card back. And this has interactions with many of your cards, because they have on-call effects particularly Negro Lazy, who then calls out whatever else you need for the situation, and because of our 1G Guardian, this can be used during your opponent's turn to a great extent. Then for the backup grade threes, I'm running two of the new Starlight Night Rose. Now I know most people, or rather most Japanese lists run this at one copy, but they also have access, to, or if they do run it, sometimes they don't even run it at all, just because this card is just that much better, and the mentality behind the deck before was, you would run max night roses and very little of other grade three so that even if you have to g assist your chances of seeing the not good grade three are that much higher as opposed to running say eight night roses 
yeah, you'll always have a Night Rose Vanguard, but you won't have the Night Rose Vanguard that you want. So instead, you would run less of these and sometimes even none of them. But anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, the only the reason why I'm only running two of these cards and then probably one when we get the 12k whale is that sh her skills are just not as powerful as this one. Her stride skill is kind of as one mill up to three cards from your deck, choose your unit from drop zone, call it, and if the unit has hollow, then it gets a 3k buff. So, I mean, the mill effect is somewhat okay if I guess you don't have a good drop zone or you're up against Naros and they manage to bind everything that's relevant then yeah but otherwise it's just a weaker skill and her generation break 2 only works on grade ones and that is soul blast one vanguard rearguard when your other unit is called into play and i think i think it's during your turn either okay no so this could go off in your opponent's turn but so when your other unit is placed on rearguard circle you can soul blast one and call a grade one unit behind her now since she restricts herself to only grade ones that means you can't recycle Mick the, you can't bring up Mick the Ghost Demon Brothers to get the 10k buff. So that ultimately just is what I think kills this card's combo ability, at least for defensive power. But she has hollow and she has a rearguard skill that works, and she's a night rose, so I still feel like the card has merit. And I'm playing too because I actually do like the card, and some of my combos involve the use of her. And that's it with Night Storm. So I'm going to be flat out and say, if you drop this card from the deck, you are doing it wrong. As this card is still very powerful, as he is the only grade 3 unit with a haul ability you can call off of Negrobone so that you can start your train. Like, you call this off of Negrobone after Negrobone kills off, say, your Starlight or whatever, then this guy calls Negro Lazy, and then Negro Lazy calls something else. So, why, why, why would... I don't see... I don't understand why people would cut this card because they want to run like seven night roses like yeah that's great you can you can run seven night roses and you can call this off of the effect of negro bone but then that's it whereas this guy starts combos and he extends combos so just run the one night storm if nothing else if you if you even run only five grade four or grade threes run four original night rows in this it's really that good then for the twos I'm still maxing on Skeleton Cannoneer as I want to see this thing as fast as possible so that I may ride it. And that way I all that that way I can soul blast it off of Go Watch and get it in the circulation that way. All the other twos I can just draw into and they'll be playable then and there. This guy though, I want to see ASAP. Then three Negro Lazies. I think one if we get the starter, if we get the restriction to our stand trigger, I'll max this guy out and maybe cut another card instead. But yeah. Negro Lazy is just a very solid card in general, and then running it out, two Negro Rooks, two King Serpents, and I cut the third Rook for a copy of Maltrate Shade. So, this is the quote-unquote, uh, what's his name, Delayed Blazer Dragon for Night Rose. So, it has Hollow, and when this unit dies by the effect of, from Rear Guard Circle, by the effect of the Hollow ability of a Night Rose Vanguard, you can put her on the bottom of the deck to counter charge one. And then, if you have a Night Rose Vanguard and she attacks for each of your hollowed units, including herself, she gains 2,000 power. So, she is a potential big beat stick, but not really. Like, she doesn't really hit the numbers that Rook does. And because she puts herself to the bottom of the deck after she dies, it's hard to consistently get her into play. So, I'm not running multiples of her. I tried it before, but I didn't like it. Then, for the ones, four unflip PGs. So, the big debate in terms of this deck right now for me is whether you run this or this. And ultimately, it's going to come down to your extra deck because Seawall Banshee requires you to Soul Blast 1 to bot deck another copy of herself from the drop zone in order to end the discard in order to bring it back to your hand. And while that's a very, very useful ability, especially if you are like me and you Soul Charge or Mill all your perfect guards, then you can at least get these back into play. But the problem is, is that Soul Blast cost as you're running Go Watch, who demands soul, Starlight Night Rose demands soul, Negro Lazy demands soul, and Fatal Shade also demands soul if you're running it. So that's a lot of soul you're using up. And like, if you're resolving all of these effects in a turn, you're gonna run out of soul very fast. And one of our G Guardians also uses soul. Like, the soul management in this deck post character booster is actually quite intense. And ultimately, since I'm running for Go Watch, I can't do four of these guys in addition because the soul blast costs will just be too much so because i'm running four go watch right now 
I have decided to stick with the unflip PGs. Not to mention being able to unflip counter blasts at any opportunity is still something worth noting. But if you decide to not run four Go Watch and run four Negro Songer instead, then you can run four of these, and I think that would work out. But that's just what I've noticed so far. And then four Stride Fodders, four Negro Bone. If Bushiroo really wants to come after this deck card, they'll hit this card. Because this is, in my opinion, the backbone of your offensive plays just because he gets another attack and he can call anything after that. And that anything is generally going to be Nightstorm, who then calls another thing, which calls another thing. So, like, this guy alone enables... After he... Attacking with this guy and boosting enables more or less three attacks. And then one copy of Fatal Shade. So, Fatal Shade is a card that is sometimes seeing play like Japan's really fond of this card at least it was not sure how it is now with the restriction but they were run of this in one or multiples uh, I don't know if it's gonna take on as well over here but basically its skill is soul blast one put it on the bottom of your deck when this unit is retired by the effect of hollow you have a night rose Vanguard. you can choose any non grade one unit in your drop zone and call it to guard circle so it has some nice synergy as it allows you to call more things at the end of, back from the end of the turn without having to overuse night rose's ability like things like this like before if you say you used up four counter blasts and you have these guys in play you would let this die unflip two let this die soul charge one charge one and then you would have night rose bring this back and then you would use his skill to bring this back but now you could let both these die and you can bring this back with night rose and then use this card to bring this back and not waste the extra soul or you don't you only have like say this in play and you don't want to mill because your deck's getting kind of low, then he dies, and then Fatal Shade brings it back, and then you flip four that way. So, it's just a good way of like maintaining some of your resources without having to expend your other resources. Then, one copy of Bail the Ghosty. Card's still good. Then for the triggers, this hasn't changed at all. We're running the eight crits, the four stands, and the four heals. Now, if the stand gets hit over here, I'm still not sure if it will. You really only have just two options. You can either play 11 crits in one stand, or you can play three of the new stand from the recent set, and one of this one. And yeah, because you're able to make big power columns, and the generation break eight makes your units really big, so standing them back up is definitely not the worst thing in the world. As by the time you're dropping that guy, your opponent's probably about four to five damage, so at that point, more crits doesn't really work in your favor, whereas stands are really powerful when your opponent's at 4 to 5 damage and some of those big columns. I.e. see what New Nectar does. And that's it for the main deck. For the extra deck, we are running 4 Go Watch because this card is stupid. And he's a first stride, a mid stride, a late stride. Like, this guy is good at any stage of the game, but he just gets insane as the game goes on, as he calls a full board for free, or almost for free. And I'm still running the two Phantasm Night Roses I know, this card got cut entirely from Japan, but I still honestly like the card, and there will be those games where you have to ride Nightstorm, and you can at least stride in this guy and turn on your lazies and your bones and your fatal shades and whatnot. And then two of the new cards. So this is Diabolos of Corpse Negro Songer. So his skill is kind of us one persona flip, discard a card. At the end of the battle, this unit attacks, I think it's the Vanguard or no, okay, so he can attack anything and trigger this skill. That's actually quite relevant. If you really need something to die, he can do that, or if you don't want to give your opponent that one damage, what have you. After he attacks, you can pay the cost. If you do, you look at the top four cards of your deck, send one of them to the up to one of them to the graveyard, and then you can choose a unit from your drop zone, call it back to field, and for each face-up card in your G zone, that called unit gets 5,000 power. So, uh... I was initially running this at 4 because I figured he'd be a good opening stride or a good mid-game stride and a really powerful late-game stride, but I found myself not really using this guy in the early stages of my stride game. Generally speaking, I go Go Watch and then it's either going to be another card or Night Rose. Like, I usually just save this guy for later on because then when he calls something, it's going to be an enormous number, like plus 35,000. And, like, he's a good card, but... For like the mid game though, I found myself actually going to this guy more. And this is Pirate King of Redemption Dragut. So Dragut's skill is kind of as to discard a card, generation break three? No, GB2. Okay, so GB2. So if you G guard, you can potentially go into this guy. So his skill is yeah, that. You for every card in your 
action, you get to call that many cards back into play. And for each unit with a hollow ability you call with this effect, you kill something on your opponent's side of the board. And if they have nothing to kill, you draw a card. Now, I don't know the ruling of what happens if you call more hollow units and your opponent has things to kill. Like if they have two cards in play and you call three hollow units, do you kill those two and get the draw? I'd like to think that with like with Carnivore Dragon, you would get that, but uh, I'd have to look into a bit more. But basically, this is the guy you go into when your opponent's at two or three or f four damage, where going into either of these just doesn't really work because they probably have a large hand. This is that guy you go into to call a board, out, clear some of their cards, maybe get a draw, and just swing. Like He's not a finisher, which is what, and when he was first revealed, people lost their shit because he wasn't a, a broken finisher like they thought it was going to be, but that's because, to be perfectly honest, we already have these finishers. Like It's, it's kind of like the Narakami problem. This deck had a lot of really good finisher strike plays, but it didn't really have a good mid play stride, and now we have that. Like, this is Blade Master Titan in comparison. Then, rounding out the strides, one Obadiah and one Sabreeze. Then, for the G Guardians, two Nagar Lily, one Deep Corpse Dragon. So, these cards work. We already know what they do. This card is still powerful for Night Roses Generation Break 2. This is just a free 20k shield for a mill 2 if need be, if your drop zone's pretty lacking. And finally, one Negro Mode. So, this card is Soul Blast 1. When it's placed on Guardian Circle, if you have 5 cards in your drop zone, it's a 20 shield. If you have 10 cards in your drop zone, then it gets another 5 on top of that. If you have 15 cards in your drop zone, it gets another 5 on top of that. So, it's a, it is basically a 20 or 30 shield for Soul Blast 1, which is pretty good, but... That Soul Blast can be an issue because, again, we're running already many cards in this deck that require a Soul Blast. And honestly, once Fighter Selection comes out, he's going to get cut out entirely. Or she? I don't know. I can't really tell because I'm not wearing my glasses right now. But this card will get cut out entirely and probably another card for the new G Guardian. And I'm going to be cutting out a Draglet for the Pirate Ship because that thing's insane. Like, people are like, no, man. The pirate ship's okay, but Die King is the best. I'm like, yeah, you, you you think that. Anyway, that's it for the deck itself. I hope you guys enjoyed it and the little bit of rambling I did in between. Like, the start of the video more or less just said it. Like, I really do enjoy playing this clan. Like, in the year and a half that's passed since it came out, like, this, it's either been playing this clan, Neo Nectar or Narukami, and honestly, this is going to probably go down as one of my favorites. Like, I thought I was going to be more of an Aqua Force fan than a Grand Blue fan, but after playing around, I was like, no, no, I really do like Grand Blue. Like, I really do like how uh, thought invoking or demanding that this clan is, because when you mess up, you legit feel bad because you could have done better. Like, I I watched some of my older games playing this deck, and I was like, man, I can't believe I made those mistakes. Like, you always just find new things to learn while playing this deck, and it's kind of like with uh, what Yu-Gi-Oh deck would I describe it as? I think it would be the, I think it would be like with Ravine Dragon Rooms, where like when you start striding, every hand is different because of the cards you have in your hand, your soul, your drop zone, and you just think it's like this this turn is a puzzle. How do I solve it? And when a deck makes you go, how do I solve this puzzle every single turn? I think there's something there and those are the kind of decks that I just really enjoy and that's why I'll probably stick with this deck for a good while longer. Now when we'll ever get another batch of support is up in the air because this was a character booster and for all we know this might be it for the year. Grand Blue might not get anything else but it's going to take a lot of bandless hits for Grand Blue to be taken out of the format anyway plus a general shift in playstyle because as long as Vanguard favors an aggressive playstyle, Grand Blue will be there as this is one of the most aggro decks in the game. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that's it for now. I've got nothing else lined up until Fire Section drops so uh, I guess we'll start seeing some CFA games, uh, some other discussion things. like. I do kind of want to make a discussion video on the Blade Master cards and how I think all those Kagura players who are like, oh my god, it's not Overlord, therefore it's bad, are being stupid because the Blade Master deck is looking really good after the new set drops, but if it's not Overlord, it's not good. And that's ultimately why Kagura has been in the shithole that it's been, is because they're relying on Overlord. But I digress. We'll end this here and say thank you all for watching, and until next time, this is Blue Star 899.
checking out.